Welcome to the great city of Istanbul. Now before we can take the journey down to the Gallipoli Peninsula, we need to get our head around this place first. And the reason for that is because in 1915 it was actually called Constantinople. And when the Anzacs landed on the shores of Gallipoli some 250 kilometers away, reaching this city was actually their objective. So to understand what happened at Gallipoli properly, we need to get our heads around the strategic importance of this city in the big picture. When Australia entered the war in 1914, very few Australians would have heard of a place called Turkey, let alone know where it lay in the scheme of things. So here's a bit of a text, kind of a history geography lesson to try and make it make a little bit of sense. If you have a look at a map of the Mediterranean, right on the far eastern corner is Turkey. And there's this tiny little waterway in between Turkey and what's called the Sea of Marmara. That little waterway is the Dardanelles, and that's what Gallipoli, the fight at Gallipoli, was all about. And the reason for that is because any ship that needs to go into Turkey or Constantinople has to go through the Dardanelles into what's behind me, the Sea of Marmara. Then from there it could enter Constantinople. But then beyond that, it goes through a small piece of water called the Bosphorus Sea into the enormous Black Sea. Therefore, ships could go from the Mediterranean, from England, right through into Russia. And at the time of the war, Russia was an ally with England. And so they figured if they could knock Turkey out of the war, they could open up the shipping lanes and supply troops and everything through to the front of the Eastern Front where Russia were fighting Germany. It's kind of complicated, but on a map it sort of makes sense. On the skyline behind me is where the Dardanelles open out into the Aegean Sea, which is northeast of the Mediterranean, opposite Greece. And uh, it's at this area is where on March the 18th was the, the massive naval battle that uh, the British happened to lose. And uh, what actually happened is they came in a couple of days earlier with their battleships. They came into the Dardanelles to suss out the place and do a bit of bombing here and there and uh, they did a big U-turn at a pretty obvious place where the Dardanelles are wider, just down here a few k's. And they did a U-turn and went back out again. Now then came the day they were going to come in, March 18, the big one. They had French battleships and uh, English battleships. I mean, this was the pride of the fleet happening here. They, this was, they just felt it was going to go straight through. They'll be through the narrows here and off they go. Problem is, on top of all these mountains around here, uh, perfectly positioned, there's forts down on the uh, sea edge, but then up on the mountains there's all these guns placed, like hundreds literally of guns placed along. So it was going to be quite an interesting battle, but this is what happened. The Turks were smart people. They saw the day before where the British were going to do their U-turns in the battle, and they laid mines not across the uh, narrows, where we are here like across, they laid a set of mines on, on, the, on the parallel to the shore. So what happened is when the battleships did their turn, they went straight into them. I think it was six battleships or something were sunk. And that's when the Navy just, um, I mean, they'd been bombarded all day. They'd been bombarding. And that's when they turned their tail and fled. And, you know, of course, there was a lot of loss of life. And this is, this is what stinks about this war that happened here at Gallipoli, is that they didn't realise that that evening the Turks had virtually finished all of their ammunition. They had virtually finished all their ammunition and were waiting for supplies to come down, uh, down the road literally from Istanbul, Constantinople. And so the British, if the next day, even though they had suffered losses, if the next day the British had have come back in, there's probably no chance they could have stopped them because they'd run out of ammunition and they would have come, as long as they would have mine swept away the uh, mines, the British would have made it through and there would have been no landing by the Anzacs or anyone on the ground here. They would have just taken through in the ships to Constantinople and taken over the place. That's a problem with here. Everywhere you look, there's a what if. What if? What if that didn't happen? Or if only this had to happen?
And it's interesting that on Anzac Day, the AE-2, a submarine, a small submarine, actually made it through all of the mines. It was the first one to do it. All the way through the mines here, it scraped its way through and uh, made its way into the Sea of Marmara and actually did some nasty business. Sunk a few things and blew a few things up here and there. Uh, it eventually got caught. The guys uh, got captured. And it's the captain was actually a relative of Bram Stoker who wrote all the Dracula stuff. Now there's a bit of interesting trivia for you.